This is Twit. All right. So there is a security story, unfortunately, that we have to cover, and it is a doozy. Maybe the biggest security story I've ever covered. Maybe the maybe the biggest open source story we've seen in like a decade is is bad. And the the headline is SSH has a backdoor. And normally we would say that would be the punchline and it would be mostly a joke. And we would say that, you know, it's actually not. And and here's what we're talking about. Well, it, unfortunately, in this case, there really is a backdoor and it really does impact SSH. Um, there is some good news, and that is it got caught before it got shipped in very many systems. Um, so let's just let's dive into this. So the 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 package in question is XZ, which is a file compression library. And specifically, it is the LZMA lib um, or lib LZMA. And about two years ago, um, to the, the, I, I will say the developer, the maintainer of that package is a man by the name of, uh, Lasse Colin, and he runs Tucani.org, uh, a, a good developer. Like this is not his fault. Um, he kind of had this habit that he would just sort of disappear from the internet for a week or two at a time, which again, that's fine. Everybody needs a break. He got approached a couple of years ago by another developer who was going by the name Gia Tan, J-I-A-T-A-N, who said, hey, let me come along and help co-maintain the XZ project. That's great. Co-maintainers are great. Um, the problem is, and of course, we see all this in retrospect. The problem is that when Gia Tan started doing this, um, one of the first things that he did is went to the, the Google... Um, OSS, uh, OSS dash fuzz project and said, Hey, by the way, we're about to introduce a change into XZ and your security fuzzing suite thinks that it's something malicious, but it's not just trust us. So here's this flag that makes it shut up. And the, the maintainer over there of that project said, okay, fine. It looks good to me. And he has since come back and said, in retrospect, this does not look good. And they of course reverted it. So why did, why, what does XZ have to do with SSH? Well, let's, let's dive into that first. So SSHD does not include XZ as one of its dependencies. That library does not get called. On several distros, Debian being one of them, I believe Fedora as well, SSHD is patched to depend upon system D makes sense. You want to be able to log your SSD, SSHD attempts. You want to be able to control SSHD. It's fine. System D depends upon lib LZMA, which is part of the XZ utils package, which is part of XZ. So in version 5.6.0 from February of this year, there is a, what is labeled to be a test file. And so a lot of a lot of uh, libraries will include um, binary files. In this case, it claims to be, and it probably is, a um, an XZ compressed file. And the idea being, we have a test suite. As part of our test suite, we want to be able to try to uncompress this known file and see if it, you know, if it fails or if it passes. So nobody thought too much about that. Um, the problem is in 5.6.0 and 5.6.1, the last two releases of XZ, the release tarball does not actually match what is in the GitHub repo. There is one line that is added, and it is an M4 macro, which is part of the GNU Auto Tools system. And what it essentially does is it pulls in a bunch of code from this test file that got added to the repo. Well, that essentially means that you would look at the GitHub repo and it would look entirely benign. But then when all the distros pulled this tarball, which was signed by this developer, the developer that was considered to be one of the co-maintainers, it had a bunch of extra code in it. And what this code does is it looks and it sees you know, so it's getting called as a library. It then looks and sees, okay, what is the name of the executable 
that is being called that is then loading this library. And if the executable name is SSHD, then it runs some code. And essentially what it does is it patches the SSHD program. And specifically it patches an RSA uh, function. The RSA, um, RSA decode something or other. Uh, and that function is part of verifying a public key. So you can, when you go to SSH into something, you can do it with a password, using your password, or you can use your public private key encryption. And so what we have here is some malware that is getting injected into verifying an incoming public key. Now, some of this has not entirely been deobfuscated. So like we don't know exactly for sure what it's doing. It's pretty obvious though that what what it's happening here is it's going to look for a like a pre-programmed public key and give SSH access. And so you have to imagine if this was not caught then you know it would have taken several years down the, the the line then your latest ubuntu server and your fedora will eventually become red hat which then becomes rocky linux and alma linux and all those you would eventually get to the point to where they all have this cooked binary and then if someone wanted to they could just sshn as root and here i've got this magic private key that matches the public key inside of this and it would assumably let them in it is literally an ssh backdoor and we collectively got about this close to shipping it in a whole bunch of distros um the reason that it was caught was because and i believe he is actually a Microsoft, it's uh, and Andres Frund. I believe he's actually a Microsoft guy. I don't know that for a hundred percent, but he was looking at his system, like he was he was working with a bleeding edge system, and asked himself, "Why is SSH taking so long? Why is SSH pinning my CPU to a hundred percent when someone tries to log in?" And then he goes, "Oh, by the way, why was Valgrind having problems on this? It's just something doesn't add up." So he started looking into it and realized that what was in the tarball does not match now um pretty much all the different distros have have reacted to this they've all pulled the versions um the united states uh cisa the with cybersecurity alliance or whatever that stands for uh is involved now um thankfully uh lassa colin has shown back up uh, he he is safe. This is actually something I was slightly worried about. He seems to be OK and uh, back back in uh, back in the saddle. Um, the the person previously known as as uh, as Jian, um, Gia, Gia Tan, I am pretty well convinced that this is not a real person and is probably the. Uh, an employee of special services somewhere, whether that's China or North Korea, or he may be working for the NSA. I mean, honestly, who knows? I don't know that we're going to ever know that for sure. Um, but enough of this was done well enough that it seems that it is probably state sponsored activity. Uh, so some government somewhere tried to backdoor SSH, which is remarkable um and i've seen two different takes on this well more more than two but broadly speaking two different takes on this one being our systems work we found it and the other being we found it this time how many others are there or will there be and that's the one that we just don't know for sure um so like i say this is it's a huge deal maybe uh, maybe the biggest story I think it's probably the biggest story that we've ever covered. And uh, it's a, it's a really big deal. Um, I, I know at least a couple of you guys were following this. Have any thoughts on it? Well, I think even some of the cutting edge distributions like OpenSUSE Tumble, we did have it, the uh, vulnerable package uh, out there in the wild for a couple of weeks. Yeah. I believe from March 7th to the 28th, I think I saw somewhere. Yeah. But, but th so thankfully, 
nothing that a sane person is going to deploy public facing <laughs> as a production server. Yeah, not going to be a production server, but I mean, there could be there could be something else out there. I don't know. But yeah, yeah I, I know I've seen a lot of them posting the last well, since yesterday, I guess, saying that they've rolled it back. I know I've seen posts from OpenSUSE, Solus, at least were a couple that yeah. I've seen. Yep. And I um, think anything exposed to be pretty corner case. Yes. At this point, if if this yeah. had gone on for a year we would be in a very different situation. If it had gone on for six months, that would have been bad enough. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's been, uh, it's been since February that it came out. So it's, it's been about a month, I suppose. So. Well, not, if you, we're also coming around the time where a lot of distributions release their, uh, you know, their next big release and LTS and so, for some of them. And so this is this is one of the things that leads people to believe that it was not a developer with a compromised account. It was actually a developer that had bad intentions from the very beginning. Um, and that is uh, the the person claiming to be Giotan has over the past few weeks gone to various distros like Fedora and some others and said, hey, the new 5.6 series of XZ is really great. You guys Really ought to try to get it into your distro. And uh, Fedora like hasn't it. reported that. I believe Ubuntu with the next LTS. I think he was trying to get it pushed in there as well. Um, yeah. yeah, trying to get that pushed out there to those uh, LTSs. And sure, LTSs continue to get updates. And most reasonable, good system administrators would update once that patch comes out. But you're going to have some out there lingering that they just install and they forget about it and there's running old whatever yeah yeah so anybody if you have done updates in the past couple of months i would say go look for xz and make sure you're not running 560 or 561 um there's also an open question of well first off is this just ssh could it be that this is malicious towards some other process um, and then there were patches added to XZ and other programs. I, I want to say that GitHub developer had something like 560 commits over the past couple of years. And we are now at the point to where all of those need to be looked at and maybe all of them reverted because it's just, a, it's a, it's a known, it's a, it, it is someone that is now known to be malicious. Um, it's also scary to think that there is some XZ code in the Linux kernel. And I, I don't think that this developer was behind any of that, but I know there is at least one thread in the kernel where people are saying, do not pull this. In fact, if you have pulled it, go ahead and revert it. And we need to kind of do a security audit on all this stuff. So it's a, it's, it's a mess. And I, I take the optimistic side and say, because it's open source, we caught it. Yes. If this had been in something proprietary, a random developer from another company would have had no chance of finding it. Um, it would have, it could have gone unnoticed for years. Um, well, I, I wonder how long before we start, and you know, and I really hate to say this, you know, it's such a buzzword now, but how long before we can get AI tools that can just start going through the code looking for malicious things well i mean we have and, we we already have tooling and some of it is ai that looks for problems but some you you get you get false positives but even at that you have to have someone that knows what they're looking at so there was a um this has been several years ago probably a decade back uh one of the ssl libraries had um, it had a feature where to get extra randomness to initialize everything for its initialization vectors, it would actually just read from uninitialized memory. And one of the maintainers at one of the big distros, it may have been Debian, I don't remember for sure, ran a one of these tools. I think it was Valgrind against it. And Valgrind said, hey, we're accessing uninitialized memory help. And so the developer went, oh, well, that's not right. And just commented it all out. 
Well, it turns out that when you do that, you you take your your entropy that you're supposed to start with and you you can now have this much entropy. And there was like a, a ridiculously small number of possible starting states like like it was scary small, like a 1024 possible starting states without that code that got removed. And so, you know, you, you do have these situations where if you go to run those tools and you don't actually know what you're doing, you can make things much worse. <laughs> <laughs> So it, it it is a it is a problem, um, and this is not the only open source security problem. Like you've got the typo squatting that's going on on PyPy and npm, um, and several several other things like that. That you know we are like actively trying to figure out how do we as the open source community deal with this. Um, I've seen some suggestions around this problem in particular, and I think one of the things that uh, distros are going to start doing is requiring that instead of getting a tarball that has been uploaded by a developer it must be a tarball that has been automatically produced by in this case by github and there is there is a way to determine which you're looking at essentially essentially you just tell github hey i want this tarball that is based on this git commit and uh, because of that, you have a little, you have a lot more reliability that you are, you do get the code that you think you're going to get. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little clip from our programming at twit.tv. For more, visit our website, twit.tv, or subscribe in your favorite podcast client. There's also a link somewhere down there. <laughs>